Hello again. We're looking still today at Exodus chapter 15 through 17, and the topic uh, for today is going to school in the desert. There are some lessons that uh, Israel learned in the desert, or should have learned, that we have to learn today as well. I said last week that uh, Israel's trip through the desert didn't go quite as they expected it would go. It didn't go, everything didn't go quite as smoothly. There were disappointments all along the way. Um, it took a lot longer than they expected because of uh, Israel's disobedience. It took 40 years to make that trip uh, to the Promised Land. Uh, but the time was not all wasted because God taught his people important lessons during that time. Uh, a couple of the important lessons, of the most important lessons, had to do with manna. One evening the people went to bed and when they got up the next morning the ground was covered with white stuff that they called manna, gift. Following the instructions of Moses, they found out that it was food and, and he instructed each family to gather as much as they needed. And when they measured it, uh, chapter 16, verse 18, when they measured it by the omer, he who gathered much did not have too much and he who gathered little did not have too little. Each one gathered just as much as he needed. And amazingly, it came out just right. And God said it would always come out just right. Now, some of the people didn't quite believe God when he said he would provide enough for their needs day by day. They thought uh, they'd hoard what they found. They thought they would gather more than enough for one day and store it up for the future. And then they wouldn't have to worry about the future. They wouldn't have to worry about tomorrow because they'd already stored it up. They wouldn't have to wonder, is God going to come through tomorrow because they had prepared for that eventuality. But it didn't work. As you know, the manna uh, became rotten and stinky. It became food for maggots. And they finally learned uh, you can't get it for tomorrow. You just have to trust God day by day. You have to trust Him for tomorrow just like you had to trust Him for today. And uh, you can't hoard up His blessings for yourself as, as a, a safeguard against the future when God won't care for you. Israel had to learn that, and God's people still have to learn that lesson today. If you're one of those people who thinks he or she has to make sure that uh, all your needs are met, who has to have everything so well planned out uh, to ensure your well-being and your happiness for yourself and your family, then you'll never have enough. You'll never have enough. The, the thing that amazes me about, sometimes I look at people who have a lot of money, people who are extremely wealthy, and, and when is it enough? It seems never to be enough. Uh, when you have to trust yourself, when you have to ensure your own future, you can never be quite certain that you've reached that point. Uh, you'll never be quite satisfied. And just when you have thought, when you do think you've reached that point, you, you become sick, or your marriage gets in trouble, or your daughter uh, leaves home, runs away from home or some, something happens that you hadn't prepared for. There's never enough if you're the one in control. And that's why you have to realize that God is your provider. 
And that's why you have to realize that you and I depend on Him every day for the provision of that day. And that's the right perspective to have when God puts a need in front of you. When God puts something in front of you and you have the resources to meet that need, what does God want you to do? Does He want you to hoard for yourself what you think you might need for tomorrow? Or does he want you to use it for the need he puts in front of you? I'm not arguing against saving for the future. There is a, a time and a place for responsible planning and for responsible saving. The whole, uh, the, the, the point here, the important point to remember is, are you trusting God day by day to provide for your needs? You can't get for tomorrow what you need. You can't get today what you need for tomorrow. You can't get to a place where you won't have to trust God anymore for the needs of that day. You have to trust God every day. And what you get will always be enough. Uh, hardship makes you hungry. And when you're hungry, you're supposed to feed on manna, which we understand to be more than physical food, which Jesus taught is the Word of God. And you'll just have what you need to meet your hardship. Just enough, not too much or too little. But you can't store up what you, what you get for a time when you don't have to trust God anymore for tomorrow's need. Because tomorrow again, he'll furnish just what you need to meet the challenges of that day. And you, if you keep doing that day by day, you'll come to know and trust God more and more. You come to know him as your Lord and master. And you will come to know yourself as completely and totally dependent on him for his refreshing word and spirit will sustain you in your daily walk with him. May God help us to learn that lesson that Israel learned in the manna. Just to repeat, you can't, you can't get it for tomorrow. You need it every day. You need the blessing of God every day. And whatever you get will be enough to sustain you. God will never leave you short. Let's thank him for that. Father, we thank you so much for your word and spirit and that what you give us, the gifts you give us, the strength that you give us is always enough to meet the challenges. Sometimes it doesn't seem like it's enough, Lord, but you promise that you will never leave us short. And we thank you that you never take a vacation you never take a break. You're there day after day. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.